Welcome back to The Engineered Angler. I wanted to do a series of these videos that are really short and uh, basically are pro tips that people just starting out or maybe people who have been making lures for a long time can use. So I'm sharing the approach from an engineer's point of view on just a hobby. When I bring a new product into the shop, I have to be sure that I know how to use it and that it's gonna work with some of the products that I already use. So what I do is I cut some PVC little test tabs and you can see I drill a couple holes in them just so I can hold them like I would hold lures and then I decide what I want to coat them with first. The idea is I want to be sure that my latest clear coat is going to be friendly with the some of the products that I already use that I might be using as a sub coat or an intermediate clear coat. So I'll make these tabs and then I'll and here, there's a few already in use here then I'll take the tab and I'll coat it with one of my other products. Here's one that I coated with Gorilla Glue Clear. And this was a suggestion from a subscriber. So I give it a shot. It actually ain't, ain't too bad. But I try to make a tab for everything I'm likely to use. This is an automotive clear coat. It, I use it as a dip. Here's a um, water-based polyacrylic from Minwax. I also dip in that. Here's glaze coat. This is very similar to the crystal clear resin. Uh, here's a, a Zap Zepoxy. This stuff's pretty good, eh, but it has its drawbacks. One, look how dark the Part B is. I've got the Solar Res and the Aluma UV. These are uh, UV Cure and Floor Wax, which I believe it or not, I use quite a bit. And last but not least, just straight airbrush paint. This is uh, Createx Moss Green. I'll take these tabs after I've got them marked and coated, and then I'll coat them with the clear coat that I'm testing. And yeah, I, I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> so I'll, I'll put this in my spreadsheet, and this way I can see what coats can go on top of what other coats. So I essentially have a little makeshift database of what I can use on top of things that I already know I'm gonna be using. It's allowed me to find mistakes that I've made combining these different coatings and it allows me to go and find what I need to use so that if I want to use a specific clear coat, I can I know exactly what to use under it. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I did this and the results are in. Let's take a peek at what we did. Let's look at the worst first, the Gorilla Clear. And you can see there's nothing on there. This is the one you saw in the video while it was in the turner. It looked like, like snot on Teflon. I have never seen a, uh, a clear coat react like that to anything. That was amazing. I had to actually pull it off and wipe it off. I was afraid it would drip, so that's an absolute no-go for an undercoat. Uh, here we have Createx paint. Um, not good, but I kind of knew that. Uh, in my experience, uh, the Createx paint doesn't seem to be uh, a good undercoat for anything. You need to kind of seal the paint before you clear coat it. But this was uh, the auto clear coat, so you can see that the crystal clear resin from uh, East Coast Resins, which is what I'm testing, right, uh, is pretty happy with that uh, automotive lacquer clear coat underneath. So that that's an actual uh, a winner there. This is the polyacrylic. It's that Minwax product uh, that is water soluble, water water cleanup on that thing. Uh, it did really well. There are some flaws, but I got a feeling those flaws were operator error. Uh, I think I screwed up and touched it there, but uh, otherwise it looks real good. It seems to really like going on top of this, so I would also call that a win. This is the uh, floor wax, which I use a lot and uh, almost always works, and the almost is what I'm looking at here. You can see it's very ripply, um, and I've never seen it do this before. I, the, in my experience, Every clear coat I've ever put on top of the floor wax has come out beautiful. So 
this is a really valuable piece of information for me. And then finally, the uh, the UV clear, um, and it really likes the UV clear too. Very glassy, nice finish. Um, three failures, three wins. So I know now that if I'm going to put an undercoat, a clear undercoat, I need to either use polyacrylic, the uh, uh, automotive lacquer, or the UV clear, which that's probably going to be my uh, preferred choice. So those are the results. So try it. I know it's a little bit much, but it actually pays off in the end and it teaches you a lot. And it really doesn't cost you anything. You already got the products and PVC is cheap. Keep watching, click that subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.